So what's being talked about is an absolute falling in love with what's happening, which means falling in love with all the characteristics of the body-mind mechanism. And also all the characteristics of all the other body-mind mechanisms. This is talking about the end of exclusion of anything. It's all it. Everything. Mine's like, yeah, but, no, but, yeah, but, no, but, yeah, but, no, but, 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 Lisa, but, no, this is bad. It's what's happening. It's in what's happening. It's not in what you think of what's happening, although that's what's happening as well. But normally the energy is so focused in that one that thinks that it's thinking, in that one that's thinking. That is who you are. And it's so drawn into this drama of opposites good bad right wrong should shouldn't why have they done this to me and the way that this separate self or this separate energy happens or the way that it functions is through a sense of not feeling good enough and when anything in the flow of life triggers that then it goes into storyland to try and avoid it they shouldn't have done that they're a bad person for saying this to me rather than just being full-on sense of unworthiness it all comes down to unworthiness or not good enough or not enough or being rejected all of those feelings as soon as separation happens or the way that separation happens is through a sense of lack and then it goes into stories to try and cover it up and normally the me energy has particular stories it goes into guilt I'm really bad for doing that I shouldn't have done that I'm a really bad person or blame it's their fault they shouldn't have done it or um, well, or why is it like this? Why does God do this? Da, 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 da. And there's so many things happening every day that often a lot of things in the flow of life trigger that sense of not feeling good enough and then are seeking to try and get out of not feeling good enough rather than the burning sensation of not good enough. If it was just the burning sensation of not good enough, I'm sure it would just collapse in on itself. But that not good enough, that centre bit of I, then springs into all these stories to try and avoid what's happening. To get to pleasure and avoid pain. If I get to pleasure, I'll be happy. If I get to pleasure, I'll feel good enough. If I get to pleasure, then this will all be okay. It's a funky drama, and man, does it create lots of dramas. Especially with the relationships or the money. These are the big dramas. They're things that tend to really trigger that sense of not good enough. But it will be different to each body, mind, mechanism or each me. It's different conditioning and genetics. And it feels like the centre of you is in the torso or in the head or in the chest or in the neck or in the stomach or in the groin. It feels like it's located somebody somewhere in here. Me. And it feels like you are the thinker. You are the creator. You are the mover of your body. But actually there's nobody in there. There's nobody in there creating thoughts. There's nobody in there creating action. There's nobody in there making the heartbeat. Or making the eyes look. Or making the ears hear. Or producing urges or decisions or intuitions. It's just coming from nowhere. Emptiness. Or nothing. And nothing is everything that's ever happened and everything that will happen and nothing
Okay, I'm finished. Who would like to go first? Whoever speaks first. Hello. Hello. Hi. <laughs> uh, this is Francisca. Hi, Francisca. <laughs> I know. It's a little bit hard to pronounce. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, once you say it, it's easy, but when you're reading it, you're not sure how that sounds. Francisca. Isn't it's Francisca, that... yeah. right. <laughs> <laughs> and um, uh, I think this is uh, so amazing. To me, it really uh, feels like magic and such a privilege to me, um, to the me, to be able to even talk to you like this. And um, I don't know uh, about anything, <laughs> but one thing I know is um, there are not many people or places where I can share um, this and... Yeah, not yeah. be called crazy or nuts. Yeah, yeah, it's so nice being it's able to share so... non-duality. It is really nice. Yeah, and it really, it it brings so much joy, and it's it's just a pleasure to um, watch you speak about it, <laughs> and it's just a joy. It's it's sharing, and um, my heart sings. Yeah. And it's not even my heart. No, it's not. It's this resonance of, of, of this pure beingness or this aliveness or whatever it is. I don't know or no thingness. Remembering yeah. that this is it. This was the love affair. It's really, and I couldn't even say it's falling in love. No, because actually there are really no words for it. But <laughs> it's hard to speak about it. I could cry and laugh at the same time, and I feel so connected. It's really, really um, amazing, and it just it 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 doesn't go. It's everything is coming and going, but this is like it just is, <laughs> and it's really freeing. Yeah, it's wonderful, and um, I'm I'm so in love. And it's not even, even um, the words. I couldn't, I couldn't explain it otherwise. It's like a death of you and me. Yeah. And although I, I enjoy it because it's so great talking to you, um, and sharing it. But at the same time, I don't feel separated. Yeah. It's it's amazing. <laughs> and. <laughs> I just um, really, I I just had the urge to tell you, thank you. Oh, thank you so much from from my heart, yeah. because the the work you apparently do, it's it's so wonderful because it gives um, it gives someone like me um, the opportunity to share. Oh, and yeah. I know it's just a game, and um, there really isn't like you and me, but it's so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> and I just really wanted to thank you for your devotion and all you you give oh, in non-giving. Yeah, it's so wonderful. It's it's everything and nothing at the same time, doing and yeah. non-doing. Yeah. And there's such an energy. I didn't even know <laughs> there is this energy. It's just appearing. And um, I, I don't even know where to go with myself. I could hug the whole world. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's really, it's completely crazy. Yeah, yeah, it sure <laughs> is. <laughs> and really wonderful. And I wanted to... Um, I just had the urge to share it. I yeah, don't even yeah. know why, yeah. but it just comes out. It's like flooding out of me. Yeah. And I really wanted to to thank you for this. It feels it feels like I always feel like when when someone's um, thankful, and it's such a lovely thing to hear because really what you're hearing is somebody resonating with this. But the response that wants to come out is it's you. Which is a weird thing to say, really, ultimately. But it's like, it's not. It's 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 
it's not me speaking, it's us or this or whatever we call it. But I love it when I hear people say that because I know that they're resonating with what's happening or with this. This is very sweet. Yeah, it's it's so sweet. It's a sweet place. It's, it's like feeling home. But these are just words. Yeah. I couldn't even describe it. If someone asked me, uh, what what are you smiling about? Or why are you so happy? I, yeah. I would say, uh, I don't even know. <laughs> it sometimes feels like a secret. It's like... Yeah. You can't speak it, so it's like you can't verbally communicate it with someone. It's like, yeah. uh, uh. It's really, it's really like a secret. It's, it, it's like it's hidden. And, um, and it's a joy that it's hidden, even. But um, it, before, um, I realized that it was a disaster. That I didn't know that it was hidden. Yeah. Kind of. But but I couldn't even say that I discovered it or anything like that. It's, yeah. It, it, it just, something fell away and then I, 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 I just see. It's like I'm not blind to it anymore yeah. somehow in a strange way. But, but, but words don't, they, 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 they can't describe it. No. It's really, it's, it's, it's such a miracle. Yeah, and you realize how screwed all the speakers are of it because you really can't put it into words. Yeah, <laughs> uh, it was really like that when you, um, I saw uh, some of your videos and um, when you were saying that it's so hard to, <laughs> to, to speak about it and I was just laughing <laughs> because I, I knew, yeah, um, you just have to laugh or to cry or whatever. It would be the same. Yeah. <laughs> and um, ah, it's it's pure connection. I was really, I was so amazed that um, this appearance of you, uh, it, it it came up, and and I thought, wow, this is so wonderful because it gives me an opportunity to speak it out loud and um, you're not telling me that you know you, you, you don't judge me for for speaking like this most people would say oh you're <laughs> crazy you've got nuts <laughs> you're out of your mind or something like that or what are you talking about <laughs> and it's like a space an open space where I'm able to just express it it's it's so wonderful and um ah, it's it's great even even today through the internet you can share although you're miles and miles away and we we have this opportunity and i'm so grateful for that <laughs> me me and my friend um we get the squeaks, we go, we sit there and we go to each other, this is really silly actually, but we go, it's appearing, it's appearing, and then we have to squeak. <laughs> <laughs> it's happening! <laughs> yeah, it's like this, um, what, what you had going on, this, this is it, baby, yeah. and I was like, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's awesome, and you don't, you, you wouldn't even know what else to say, as this is it, and just... <laughs> Uh, yeah, being in joy and yeah, it's 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 so it's happening. <laughs> and I don't have the feeling it's about something, so it cannot leave like anything other uh, that that was always leaving. Yeah. Because everything else just Go. always it was it was a way to enjoy, but at some point it would be over, and this is just. It's, it's here. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> but I, I have a feeling like this can't be taught. 
I wouldn't even, if someone asked me, how can I, Yeah. Uh, how can I, uh, I, I want this too, you look so, so happy, so relieved, so unstressed, what are you doing, is it some, some kind of uh, yoga, or what, what pills do you, how, <laughs> do you the hell, how, how the hell would you tell, you could, <laughs> what would you pick out to tell people, you're like, yeah. well, um, <laughs> it's, it's really, and that sounds, it's so hard for the mind that's in looking to hear that because how can you pick out something in which someone should do or something that's more important or something that's more it? Uh, but that's so hard for that looking energy to hear. Yeah. How could you possibly know what leads to this? Like it's its just, it's impossible, it's even crazy. It's, it's not even that it's impossible, it's that that just doesn't make sense. But how do, to explain that to anyone and then... Does it really matter explaining it to them, just if it happens? <laughs> yeah, and it, it kind of seems unkind uh, to me because I would I would have to uh, tell someone um, the you you invested so much in all your life uh, you you need to um, uh, kind of um, <laughs> yeah you you. Uh, you need to let go of it, and it's like how how could you ask a person to to let, let go, go of yeah. themselves? It's it's not it's not possible to to um, to yeah to talk about this in a way. If people ask what what uh, what is it what I have to do, and you couldn't tell them that. They cannot do it. No, it's so hard uh, for 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 someone who invests so much in, into uh, doing to do it. Yeah. So the the only answer that I come up with, which in a way is a lame answer, is I say that sometimes when I'm speaking, there can be a resonance of what's being talked about. There can be, I think, but I don't even know that some sort of knowing of what's being talked about beyond what you think you are there for. But then at the same time, I don't really know if that's true. But that's what comes out. <laughs> I think sometimes yeah. with the joy or the freedom, you, you can see it, you remember yourself in some way. I don't know, though. I just speak. <laughs> yeah, it, it kind of makes sense uh, to me that I uh, don't even uh, care about... Because if I think, okay, I have to um, tell people what I'm happy about, it, it, it usually is because they want me to tell them what they can do as well. Yeah. And it's not something to do. So I don't okay. care about this. I just think, okay, I'm, I'm, just, uh, I'm just here <laughs> and I couldn't do anything. So um, I don't get in that uh, story of um, telling people, yeah. Telling people and usually it's something like um, it, it's 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 through the eyes I don't even know why it's uh, such a resonance but in that of the non-speaking there's so much um, said yeah. and um, yeah I, I don't even know it's really um, like uh, all all the feelings yeah. they it, I, I, I just realized that even fear is kind of um, uh, exciting yeah. and, so, uh, and, 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 and so love. I, I don't even know. I, I kind of feel like I can't tell the difference anymore. Yeah. And I'm, I'm just so in... It's, it's like Into what's happening, yeah. 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 And I feel so alive. I've never been... I've, I've never felt this this life and I'm so excited and nothing is happening <laughs> and I'm so excited and, and then you go back to it's appearing it's appearing yeah it's appearing <laughs> and I don't know but uh, I don't know I, I didn't do drugs really I, yeah. I've always been um, a real good kid <laughs> <laughs> but it must be kind of like uh, like this getting high a little LSD is a little bit like this, or the yeah. hallucinogenic drugs. Not so much like cocaine and stuff. Oh, I'm just admitting that I've done it all. But <laughs> yeah, but but more the hallucinogenics 
there's a little bit of a taste in it. It kind of like disorientates the sense of eye or disorientates your position. But <laughs> funny. It's really funny because everything can appear and it's it's allowed to it, it, it it's it, everything can happen. Yeah. It's it's like everything is welcome. Yeah. And at the same time I'm 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 not disturbed by it. It's it's like it's it's such a joy to 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 be, and I I remember it's it's kind of blurry, but I remember being a kind of a victim to life yeah. for <laughs> basically thirty years, and I always thought it it's it's like um life was like a torture chamber like why do i have to feel this and that and all this stuff why is it happening to me and uh i don't get it why am i punished and whatever and now this is just it, it it's it's not there anymore i cannot find it i cannot find the sufferer i cannot find the victim anymore and nothing changed in in my life it's 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 life it sounds completely crazy, <laughs> but I cannot, I, I cannot find this entity anymore. Mm. And I'm so in, 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 in love. It's, 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 it's kind of a death, but, but in a positive way. A death is life. It's, mm. it's like the opposites collide yeah. and they crumble into, into pure joy. Um, I'm just, um, I'm completely in love. <laughs> I didn't know this was possible. I didn't know that this, this was, um, that this was life. And I see. And thank you, thank you for being um, here. I love you so much. I love you. I love you. I'm so sweet. <laughs> and it's really, um, it's it's a different kind of love that I used to think was love. It has nothing to do with wanting or having or claiming. It's just, it's it's just what is. <laughs> and. It's only thank you in my mind. My whole body says thank you. <laughs> it's wonderful to be able to have this connection through time and space via internet. Yeah. And um, because it, it gives the illusion, like the illusion of time and space, and it takes it kind of away. <laughs> because um, we're able to communicate uh, through it, and it makes it seem like it's irrelevant, the time and space, which is, it really is. <laughs> but. It's just so great to uh, be able to, to share this, mm -hmm. no matter where we are. Mm -hmm. And I don't have to know anything anymore. No, nothing to know. I used to think that I have to know everything to um, have a life, a su successful life or whatever life. And I, um, I remember the fear of, of letting go because I didn't know what to cling on to. And I'm so held. It, it's, everything is held. And it was all just, just an illusion that I have to uh, do and create. I never created. It was always done. It's all done. It's appearing. 
yeah it's it's really appearing in it if he can even say so <laughs> all these words they it, it's like it's like a dance it, it, it's like a dance and you always think okay i tripped and here i fell and it's not right <laughs> and um it's, it's such a joy And it's so easy. Yeah. It's so effortless. Really amazing. <laughs> and I it it's it's something that I could never have imagined, even if a mind had tried to imagine what what's what's wonderful or it's 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 beyond uh, anything I cannot describe it <laughs> <laughs> but this is it this is it baby yeah <laughs> like it's like being exhaled and at the same time being completely on fire it's everything at once and nothing <laughs> Yeah, it's purely wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> and I could cry and laugh at the same time. <laughs> I sometimes have to cry in the middle of talks. Yeah. <laughs> Just the beauty of it all. Yeah. Um, it's really, uh, it's, it's, it's such a, such a, joy to to express and to 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 watch everything appear and also to um, to watch it fall away and I uh, I uh, used to know uh, this fear of letting go or losing and even in in, in losing like it's gone it's so wonderful because something else appears. Yeah. <laughs> and all this, all this uh, suffering and all this, this whining and complaining, it, it almost seems uh, funny to me. Like I was only entertaining myself or telling myself a joke. <laughs> it, it, I wouldn't even know it, it's, it was like singing a song and I used to, and, and I was in love all the time with everything and even with, with this apparent victim yeah, or yeah. With, with everything I was, I was always this love, yeah. even when I thought I was abandoned or I don't belong or I don't have a connection and I'm, I'm, I'm separate, I, I always I always belonged. I was so loved in that. And I didn't see it. It's, and now I see. It's, it's something that I was never born, so I can never die. It's, it's always this, an ending. I wouldn't even know. I, some, some, somehow I feel like this energy is going to explode, like my um, my chest. Yeah. 
like like my heart gets so big it cannot stay in this cage of ribs anymore it yeah. needs to it, it needs to explode and I, and I, I couldn't even make myself believe in that anymore that I that I was ever separate that you weren't me that there was a you and a me <laughs> And this, this, it's, it's like, maybe, maybe I could say it feels like coming home, but I was never away from home or something like this. It's not quite, quite, uh, these are only like, like words trying to, <laughs> trying to describe the undescribable. And it's it's a knowing that it's it, it, it's not in my head. My head doesn't know this. It's it's something that that just is the this knowing. I didn't even know that I could talk so much about this, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> really, because I had, the, I, I had the thought I would just call in to say thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a little, and, ah. and I'm now the same. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm speaking, uh, I, I don't even know, for, for minutes and minutes, it's like tweet, tweet, tweet. <laughs> and it wasn't planned. Uh. <laughs> I actually really wanted to um, say thank you and um, for for giving uh, so much um, of of you in your life, like the, the character that in life that that is really um, giving so much, although. Um, it's 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 not an effort to give no it's not and it's this is um a theory that that appeared which i mean it's a bit romantic this theory but it's like when when that energy of personal falls away so when there's no longer trying to hang on to everything and so everything's just going and being lost then it's also the opposite as well because you're not holding on to anything and trying to to make anything stay then it's also ultimate giving as well but it's not something personal. It's not my body or me or anything like that. It's just a natural way of things, because something new appears. So it's not only the loss; it's the giving as well. Yeah. So that's just a theory that popped up recently. <laughs> it's not obviously yeah. not quite like that, but it's both. It's like in that perpetual state of loss. You're also, there's also the perpetual state of giving. It's not even a state, but. Yeah, and I even I couldn't even tell the difference because no. in this appearance, and then like this moment, yeah. As soon as it goes, it's here again. Something's here right. again. It's you can't even find the beginning or the stop. Yeah, it's kind of the same at, yeah. at the same time. Like same, same. It's yeah. it's appearing and and going away. It's it's like the gain and the loss at the same time. And in this, it it just collapses, and it's just life. It's it's just it it it, it is um, the perfect setup. Yeah, the perfect it's setup. Perfect setup. It's it, it's really miraculous. So I wouldn't even bother to separate the appearance from um, 
from the disappearance anymore. No. I would just... There's one movement happening. Yeah, it's just movement. Yeah. And it's so creative in the movie, but it, at, the, at the same time, it doesn't do anything. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> this is so, I mean, this is just amazing. I, I could, um, I feel like it, it, somehow I feel like I'm in, in kind of these Disney movies where, where they just start out to sing, yeah? yeah? When something really emotional happens and they all burst out into a song. <laughs> and I just start singing a song about it because it's so, it, it's, it, it's just... It's just so perfect. I don't know if you're watching on Ustream. I've just put my little dog, or my mum's little dog. I'm looking after my mum and dad's dogs at the moment, and she's rolling around. I love it when she does that. She's just stopped. <laughs> she always looks like she's in ecstasy. Oh, she's off now. No, no. <laughs> Where are you going, Mutty? Where are you going? I think I had been off. Hmm? Don't even know what happened. Yeah. But Skype uh, turned me off somehow. Yeah. But I'm online. <laughs> yeah. I've got so, about a hundred questions just come through now. It's really sweet. People are um, like uh, have said nice, nice yeah. things about uh, uh, about um, our Twitch chat. Oh, so um, they they gave like comments on it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm just so I'm just so excited and and um, really um, I know in this world there is time, <laughs> and I've taken a lot of it up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I might be on to like eight o'clock now, finishing all the questions, but it doesn't matter. Yeah. Who cares? What else is there to do? <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just. Uh, I'm, I'm just so excited and yeah. thank you for, for for taking the time to listen to my chatter and my, my, my Twitter. Pleasure. <laughs> well, it's nothing to do with me, but my pleasure anyway. We'll play the game. <laughs> yeah, it's it's such a pleasure. It's such a privilege mm. and I love you so much. Oh. It has nothing, it's it's not, not anything personal. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I always say it to people <laughs> and they're like, oh, okay. <laughs> It Love just you. has to. Come it out. just had to be spoken. Yeah. And um, I, uh, I wish you the best. Yeah, and you. I'm so in love, <laughs> and I, uh, I will uh, check in again. Yeah, do that, Fran Francisca. Did I Francis say that right? Yeah, Francisca. <laughs> Francisca, right? Yeah. Thank you, Francisca. <laughs> okay. Bye bye. bye. Okay, okay. Um, I think there was someone else that called as well, but they might be um, gone now. If you want to call back, you're more than welcome. God, my mind's tripped out now. Zzz. The fuse is gone. Zzz. How am I going to answer this? Hi, Lisa. You often f speak about stillness and movement, even words are lies. Would you say that stillness is movement or movement is stillness? Both the same, Jerome. Both the same. Either way around, you say it. And then neither is way as well, because ne no words can speak it. Hi, Benji. Benny boy. Not enough is enough, says Matt. Hi, Raman. Hi. Appreciate rain crashing down and you're looking beautiful. It feels like autumn in Holland and you've done your hair nice. <laughs> Damn, I admire your patience. <laughs> Hi, Lisa. Are you answering questions? Yes, I am answering questions now. 
Oh, girls, Francesca and you, take me to your club, please. Very nice. <laughs> she was a young blonde as well. Nathan, bless you. Hi, Lisa, bless you. Big heart. Hi, Gerd. Bonjour. Last time in Paris, I kissed you on the neck. You did? You should have said that you were Gad. You kissed me on the neck. I was kissing random strangers. Well, pe random strangers were kissing my neck. I don't remember. <laughs> hey, Loot. Hi, Phyllis. Hi, Jim. Hi, Lisa. Looking very lovely, by the way. Thank you, Jim. Question for today. There is understanding that all there is is one thing or event, all of which is almost nothing. Do you know how it is that there is this illusion that there is identification with an eye which seems to be inside a physical body and then others are seen out there in other bodies or trees or future? Do I know how it is? But maybe this is not important, haha <laughs> words. Yes, the chat is lovely. Can feel she is there. Lovely confession. She's not there. The she collapsed. The she, she, she. Um, so what was the question? Do you know why the illusion appears? No, it just appears. I could tell you the how and why, or I could tell you um, what the illusion is. But I don't know why anything appears. It appears because it does, because of nothing. But the way that the eye works is this sense of lack and then playing this game of trying to get away from this sense of lack and trying to get to a place where you don't feel lack. Hey, Mark. Whoa, what? Hi, from Germany, Lisa. Hi, Mark, from Germany. Whoa, what beautiful words. Whoa. This is from Julie. You have almost 90 followers today. Whoa, ho. If $10 a show, oh my God, oh my God, the caller is so awesome. <laughs> yeah, if everyone pays $10 a show, woo woo woo. <laughs> Lisa could buy more jewelry. <laughs> Hello, Lisa. I'm back to my second home country and tomorrow back to work. Any advice how to keep cool in a stress environment after so nice relaxing holidays I've had? Thanks, with love. Um. Uh, the idea that it's you that needs to keep cool makes it ten times more st stressful. If stress appears, that's what's appearing. There's no escape of anything. In fact, the stress is the one that thinks it's doing. I don't know if there's stress apart from that very stressful, I've got to make this work, I've got to make her like me, I've got to make her do this, I've got to be that, I've got to be this. Stunning stuff Lisa, thanks Jahash. What does it mean to say nothing ever happened? Well, the assumption of the mind is that there's things happening there's actually no thing happening. There's nothing happening.
things only appear in duality, in the words and opposites. Where is a thing? If you got a microscope out and looked at all things that you call things, you'd never find the start and stop of anything. You'd never find the barrier of anything. You can only find barrier in words and description. When we've taken those words and descriptions to be a truth and who you are and who the other is, and then an energies come about of you, me, and you've got to find this thing, this ultimate thing, the Oscar prize. Dun, da, da, da. It's the money. There's nothing to find, it's all that same thing. It was all in vain, there was never anything to get. Because there is no thing. Nothing ever happened. Hi Jim. Joyous. Hi Alexander. Hi Lisa. Amazing. I am amazing. I am amazing. Uh, I am amazing. No. Amazing. I amazing. Cool. Love it. Yes, your answer that she is not there, Fab. Thanks. What does it mean to say nothing ever happened? Or if you're in love with everything that's happening, you're also in love with pain and anger? Everything. Everything. Jealousy, loss, joy, happiness, excitement, sadness, dog poop. The bo body has pleasures, trust me. It doesn't want to eat dog poop. Okay, there's no more questions on Skype. I've got lots in my email box. So somebody put violent stress arose during that conversation with the crying woman and that's what's happening violent stress the mind goes it's her it's them shouldn't should i don't want to feel like this it's just pain extreme pain and then the mind makes up stories to try and escape the pain why is she speaking for so long why is she not stopping her why are they so joyful and I'm not? Why am I like this? And at the base of it all is just this deep sense of lack of love. And it cannot be avoided. The me will try and try and try and try and try until it absolutely exhausts itself to get somewhere else and get away from it. It can't. And it's same with the opposite opinion. Some people are like crying here too, so beautiful. Like, um, there's no actual description of that conversation. Like, like, it's just that some people are listening and beauty arose. And then that's it, full stop. You can't even say beauty arose or love arose. But then the mind concludes, oh, it's because they're two so loving or it's because those two are so hateful, whatever it is. There's no conclusion to any of it. They can be theories, but they're weak theories in this. Weak. Oh yeah, James, if you're there, you wrote me so many things this week, I'm not sure which ones you want me to read out, if any. So I'll just leave yours.
This is from David Miller. I think that I spoke to you on Skype this week and we chatted about this, but in case we didn't, I should just um, answer it again. Okay, so David says, Hi Lisa, could you please comment on the notion of intention and its seeming its relevance to the unfolding of a person's life? Because it seems to me that there is certain continuality which makes sense in each life and is often interpreted by many as proof of karma. Well, this moment is a result of everything that's ever happened and everything that's going to happen, which is nothing. So it's taken everything that's happened to get here, which is nowhere, which is nothing. So in the apparent flow of things, it seems like one thing leads to another, leads to another, leads to another, but there's nobody that could have intention. There's not somebody in there separate from everything else that's ever happening, which is nothing. So you, you can't create intention to get enlightened you can't make it happen. You are appearance. You are the flow of things, which is no thing. You, the body David, cannot be separated out from everything else. It's all one movement, appearing and disappearing, appearing and disappearing. So, attention or no intention, you aren't the doer. You aren't the creator. You are an appearance. There's a puppy! There's a puppy! What are you up to, Missy? What are you up to, Missy? We're on Ustream. Oh, yes. Um, yep. Anyway, I think I ended that, didn't I? This is from Sue Smith. Hi, Sue Smith. Dear Lisa, I had the impulse to share these comments. I was amazed by the openness and the compassion in your answer to listeners' questions. Even though you often brutally deconstruct the illusion and the beliefs the questioner holds, I could sense the underlying compassion in your answer. Someone said it was boring to listen to the same thing over and over again, but I don't feel it that way. I enjoy listening to you and hope you will continue to broadcast your talks. I know the previous statement wrongly assumes there is separation and there is a doer, but the feeling of gratefulness is true and hope it's not the small me here seeking validation from you there. Even if it is, that's love too. Even if the, the small me is seeking love, then that's what's appearing. It's not right or wrong. That's not any better than somebody with no me in them, or worse. It's just an appearance happening and it's not you doing it. Question. 
It say, seems that as a result of falling in love with non-duality, I'm finding it more and more difficult and emotionally painful to convince myself to sacrifice the peace and happiness of this moment, to do things for the sake of achieving future betterment, yet I'm able to give 100% of things I love doing. Or more accurately, there is allowing of things that naturally happen. At times there is fear which in fact is an old belief pattern that others will see me as a failure, but at the same time it doesn't feel like I have the energy to revert to the old ways. I'm swap swamped by the current of life. <laughs> Asking what I should do seems a redundant question, but at least could you re reassure, don't know what, with love and gratitude, Susa. Yeah, that often is the case because everybody else has such a strong sense that they're not good enough, they work so hard to prove they're good enough. And when that begins to get challenged, often the body, my mechanism, has lack of energy to be such a strong producer. Some still carry on producing, um, or high producers, but most just revert back to producing enough to live and doing things they enjoy or what their body mind mechanism enjoys whether it be gardening or something creative or even my dad he used to enjoy computer programming which is creative or fixing a car whatever it is but you can't find betterment in the future and so much of it was about showing others that you were better crazy game eh showing others that you are better than them And then when that energy falls away, the body just does what it does. It's about survival, um, eating, sex, <laughs> sleeping, and then also the love of just doing thing, meaningless things like gardening or whatever it is, driving. I love being driven in fast cars. Does that make me shallow because I'm blonde? I like that. <laughs> this is from Gerard. V. Ganesan, grand nephew of Ramana Maharshi, a brother in Bhagavan, always be a yes man if we purposely delight. We will positively experience our daily life becoming lighter without burden. <laughs> Love, Gerard. It's not that the body becomes a yes man. It's that the one that was resisting, that personal energy falls away. And then there's yes to life. It was always yes to life because it's appearing. But it's not personal action. We always hear these things and take it on as an action. So the body will always say yes. Imagine if I said yes to everything, I'd be bonking all day. <laughs> be bonk, 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 bonk. And for those of you that don't understand the word bonk, it's sex. Sexing, 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 sexing. Oh, Gerard, why do I always have to say these things to you? <laughs> Brian Dew. Oh, hang on, I just need to tell Gerard. I've got a feeling that I might fall asleep in this question. I'm sorry, Brian, if that activates your sense of not feeling loved, but that's the way it is. Hi, Lisa. While listening to your recent interview on natural health radio, natural health as opposed to apparently unhealthy health, <laughs> which happens to be my preferred means of achieving health, I felt compelled to share my philosophy about the truth of language with you. Gee, lucky you, huh? <laughs> so often I hear people say, as you did in this interview, 
though I may be paraphrasing what you said or possibly even misquoting you altogether, but I'm too lazy to go back and check. There is no truth in language, and then you just sort of leave it, the statement hanging out there without any further explanation. And while strictly speaking, whatever the hell that means, this is true. I think the following simple follow-up statement can paradoxically help to clarify what the statement is actually attempting to convey. The only truth that language can ever convey are the sounds and symbols of language itself. In other words, the supposed content of language is, to use your words, bullshit. But the sounds and symbols of language themselves are indeed real, and as such, do convey truth. It's just that the truth they convey derives entirely from what they are, and in of themselves, i.e. merely sounds and symbols. Not some other kind of theoretical truth that their author intended them to convey, damn. Have you ever noticed how different it is to write about this shit without feeling like you have to qualify everything you're saying using quotes or parentness or by offering comments with uh, dash, etc. It's exhausting. Okay, so thrilling, right? Hint, wrong. Your time actually would have been better spent yawning or doing pretty much anything else in the world that there is to do, but there is nonetheless for what worth it is, but there is nonetheless for what it's worth to you, if this little tidbit of philosophy, aka a bullshit, is meaningful or useful to you in any way, as well and good, and if that's not, well, all well and good, just the same. I've enjoyed watching your videos and listening to your interviews. They've been the source of many insights for me and often a good reason to crack open a beer or a bottle of wine or a bottle of whiskey or a box of razor blades. Relax, I'm just kidding about the beer. <laughs> Usually you're funny, Brian. You're not making me fall asleep. <laughs> anyway, thanks for all you happen. Yes, yep, I did it. I close my email with totally lame, non-dual joke. Turns out the universe is a horrible joke writer. I'm sorry you had to witness that. Woohoo! There it goes again. Okay, I'm done now. Sorry about all of that. Best regards, Brian Drew. <laughs> um, Marcus, I'm just going to finish answering Brian's question and then I'll come back to you. You can just sit there for a moment while I finish. Um, I don't know. I don't, I forget, I've forgotten what you were even talking about. Oh, who gives a fuck what I say? <laughs> yeah, I'm wrong. I'm right. Who cares? <laughs> I won't remember this. I'm sorry. My brain is hopeless now. Um, yeah, they they seem to be a communication. I don't know. Or not. I don't know. Okay, let's move on. <laughs> Hi, Marcus. Hi. Hey. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. You do know that you're on Ustream? Uh, yes, yes. Very good. Is I just, it, I just tried okay? to, yeah, I just tried to warn people, because sometimes people call and they have no idea they're being recorded and broadcasted. Oh, well, that's all right. I've been watching the Ustream. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay, so... You say that initially Lisa woke up and then there was a three-year period of going between, you know, expansion and suffering until it all settled out, right? Did I say that? You said that in several videos. Three years? Yes, that's what. That's how you say it. Like, you went to Ramesh Balsakar and then Roger Castillo. Just for three years? Well, that's, that's what you say, yes. <laughs> I think it might have been longer than three years. Or maybe, maybe, well, I'm not talking... Well, I don't know, it's your experience, but anyway. <laughs> I don't know either, I forget to get these to the things. Point. Um, yeah. In the past few months, I've had really, I've had, goodness, well, I guess you could say enlightenment experiences. I've had moments where it felt like time fell away, or it felt like everything was one, 
and it was all very blissful. It felt like I was high. Yeah. But because, you know, those are experiences, inevitably they end. Yeah. Right now, everything feels very normal. Yeah. And often in your videos, you talk about energetic contractions. Yeah. Like feeling in a body. So I guess you could say these experiences are like energetic contractions. Um, so at the end of each experience, this thought arose, like, oh, okay, that's it, I'm done. Yeah. Like, it can't get any more non-dual than this non-duality. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I guess I'm no longer expecting to ever be done with having these contractions. Just, just, just one second, sorry. Khaleesi! Ah! Lisi! Sorry, Karen. Yes, yeah, so. Um. I guess I'm wondering. Yeah. Do these energetic contractions ever end? And I'm wondering, will I ever be done with them? Or if you no, know, you, no you, way... you won't be done with them. Yeah, I mean, to the extent that, you know, a person exists, and to the, the one extent that... that time exists, to the extent that we're talking about energetic contractions as if they happened in the past, is there ever a point where things just flatten out, or is there always more, you know, experiences, and then going back to normal, and then feeling high again, and then going back to normal? What's normal? I'd say normal just, you know, talking on Skype, or like, you know, looking through your emails, just like hanging out with people, just not, not feeling like you're high all the time, not feeling like there's no time, being able to function in, you know, the apparent waking society. What's the question again? All right, so basically my question is, how do I know if, When you're done. Yes, yes, how you do I know when I'm done? What you won't. That you won't give a fuck anymore. <laughs> oh, and I just don't give a fuck anymore. <laughs> but it was like the you there will collapse and stop looking at itself. It will just be what's happening. Okay, yes. So the way I see it now... There can be well, many highs and I'm, yes. um, of, um, of lots of pleasure and lots of experiences as the person collapses. And often the mind concludes, I'm done now, or this is it. And who is it that's concluding that? Um, it's not, well, let's say it's a thought that arises. Yeah, and, and then, then that gone. thought's still believed in, right? Well, no, it's not really believed in, no. But it, 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 still thinks, it still thinks it's somewhere. Where would you be? It still <laughs> thinks it's somewhere in an experience. This is what's getting deconstructed, but it's got nothing to do with you and me. And is there a start and stop to anything? I don't fucking know the end of... Like, I just don't know these, these answers. I just know that in non-duality, or it seems to be, that there can be a collapse, collapse of that one that's taking life personally and um, feeling like life is happening to them. But I don't even know if I know that. Oh, it's so far out, this subject. But you know from direct knowledge. What direct your own knowledge? Experience. Well, is that direct knowledge? I mean, how many times have you lied about your own experience? Can you ever talk about your own experience? You don't mean to lie about your own experience, but if you're in a good mood, then your experience will look different. If you're in a bad mood, your experience will look more negative. The same experiences. The same stories will change depending on what you're feeling and what veils are up now. You don't know. We just don't know. And what happens, all I can say is what happens is the one that care collapses. And then it's just this. It's not looking at itself. Where am I on the spiritual path? Where, where, where am, when am I going to get there? Or it's just what's happening with a big question mark to everything. And then when that question mark is the main thing, nothing's being held onto as you. But it's nothing to do with you. It's not you doing it. And I sound most probably like a crazy woman half the time because this is so impossible to talk about. <laughs> you yeah. don't sound crazy to me. No. <laughs> yeah, maybe not to the people on Ustream. <laughs> <laughs> I'm okay. I think that answers my question. Thank you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> do you have an... Oh, he's gone. Hi, Jim. 
Your answer that she is not there, fab, thanks. The chat seems to make the love become more real for me, but it's, it is not causing it, it's just arising. Did it influence it or could anything have ray rised? <sighs> Nothing's influencing, like, where can you say anything starts and stops? Like, why should just that chat be the, the result of what's happening now? What about when you were born? What about the Big Bang? How can you separate anything out? It's all one movement. There's no separation between any things, which is nothing. We can't conclude. We can only conclude for fun or practical discussions. But yet we've taken this conclusion to be really serious and who you are. Hi, Julian. Hi, Lisa. Was wondering if you could say something about the absolute and reality. If anything comes up, if not, that's okay too. If to go we first. Where's Kelisi? Lisi Lose! Here she comes! Here she comes! Okay. So we got one for Lisi, one for Matley, one for Cass Cass. You don't want one? Where's the gratitude? <laughs> um, could you say anything about the absolute and reality? Um, this is the absolute. This. Oh, relativity. Sorry, not reality. Um, absolute and relativity. Oh, I don't tend to speak like that. I don't tend to go between the absolute and the relative. There tends to be other speakers. So you might want to ask them more what they mean by it. Um, I just point to, I suppose I just point to the absolute and I don't talk much about the body-mind mechanism. I assume that's what they mean by the relative. Um, and I don't talk about healing the body-mind mechanism much. I don't talk about that much. Sometimes I do. The results of what the collapsing of the me looks like in the body-mind mechanism. I tend to just point back to this boundless freedom. Um, yeah. And it all happens by itself. Johan. Hi, Lisa. I can't find the energy to change the way things are, even though the temptation arises. Is this a trick from the mind? It feels like I'm exhausted of plans and futures and somehow in realising that a certain kind of relief is found. Yet there is one thing I want to avoid. It is becoming arrogant of talking bullshit. Um, well, uh... The problem with the deconstruction is the mind splits off into two things and it it splits off into to this one that thinks that it's undoing the ego or it can see the ego and then it it's like is that a trick of the mind who thinks that it's a trick of the mind who is that 
Who's the one that's like, ah, oh, that's a trick of the mind, Laura? Or who, who's separate thinking that? This is coming back to absolute not knowing. And then the body-mind mechanism appears and says things and knows things. But the inside or the outside or the center collapses and then it's just mystery. And you don't know. How, who would know the trick? And you can't avoid being arrogant. If arrogant arises, that's what arising and it rises and it's subjective to who interprets it. Hi, Andreas. Mushrooms are better than LSD. You're so funny crazy. <laughs> I've never tried mushrooms, actually. I tried to a few times and they'd gone bad and they had no effect. It's so funny when you do drugs and then the drugs have gone bad or something and they don't have an effect. And because my mind's quite crazy, like a few times I've eaten hash cake and thought I was stoned. I remember my friend was like, here, Lisa, have a special brownie. This was like at 10 a.m. And to me, a special brownie is like a, uh, a hash brownie, like a... Uh, <laughs> this is when I got to Ibiza, actually, to do talks. And I was like, ah. Oh. Okay, so I had the special brownie and then I felt like I was really stoned and then I found out the next day they were just regular brownies or later that day. <laughs> That's happened to me so many times. Like I took a mushroom shake once and nothing happened. But I wasn't sure, I was like... Ratchet. <laughs> Love. Okay. Hi, I'm new here. Just wanted to say hello. You rock. Hi, Pepper Each. You rock too. <laughs> I guess this is me who thinks that. Yeah. You're not undoing yourself. You is being undone. But then the me's like, ha! I'm tricking myself by doing this or doing that. And my God, you sometimes listen to people. People call me or you listen to people in spirituality and they're so obsessed with their process. They can talk for hours about their process. Okay. Questions. I've still got quite a few more questions. Brian. Oh, you answered that one. On. Dear Lisa, I realised I got into that Advaita and liberating thing because I disliked this character so much. I really wanted to get rid of it. I hated it, which is a stupid idea, I realised. After I heard from you last Wednesday that all bad is as much loved as the good and I could really feel the truth of it for the first time in my life, I felt so relieved. So I'm starting to enjoy this character, treating it with love and respect instead of trying to kill it and get some imagined liberated state that I have in my mind. Thank you so much. Your words do me good. Love, Arnie. Yeah. Most people are trying to avoid themselves. Little do they realise it's absolute falling in love with yourself. To the point, falling in love so much that you disappear with that which is loved. Or the one that was falling in love disappears in that love. Most of the time they're like, this is bad, a trick of my ego, I've got to get rid of the ego. <laughs> absolute falling in love with the story of that person. Do you remember last week that quote? I'll have to say it again because I love it so much. So this is from a film called Her. And she says at one point when she's leaving her lover, she's trying to explain why she has to leave her lover. And she says, I find myself now, I find, I've fallen in love with the story so much that I've begun to read it really slowly. And the slower and slower I read it, the bigger and bigger the gaps in between each word became until they were infinite space. This is where I am now. 
Beautiful. Thanks, Arnie. Hi, Bert. Hi, Lisa. You said your words and answers arise spontaneously from boundless freedom and stillness and that there are no other separate separate from you. When I listen to you, what's the true nature of my listening? I can't answer that. That's such a great question. Who is listening? And this isn't quite correct what you said that I say, but I don't mind. Everything's arising from that boundless freedom, though everything, even the cage story of me, and this is arising from me in my story in time. Everything from nothingness. You assumed that your listening was separate from the sounds. It gets so fucking funky, this stuff. You assumed that you were hearing. <laughs> you assumed that you were hearing something out there. But the hearing and the heard are the same thing. But I really can't answer it for you. Who's hearing? That's the magic. Hi Lisa, love your work. I have a question about the words reinforcing. I've heard you and Tony talk about spiritual practice as reinforcing the full self identity. If awakening cannot be brought about by practice, then how can it Re be reinforced. I'm assuming this is just a figure of speech. Many thanks for any thoughts on this, Theo. I don't know if I do ever say it's reinforcing. Maybe I imply that um, the believing that you can practice is staying in that very narrow world of you and doer as the doer. Maybe that implies reinforcing but I don't mean it like that. Someone just texts me, D. This English lady I know, who's um, she's on holiday in uh, Hong Kong or Bali, but she's on her way to Bali. Woohoo! Just tuned in. One thirty here in Hong Kong. Off to Bali in four hours. Yes, I'm in love with me and everyone. Love the quote. Reading it all very slowly when I can. Ha ha ha. You're so sweet, Dee. I, the quote from her, this is from Laurent, breaks my heart and makes me feel extremely empty. This is from Marcus. If Lisa does not believe in cause and effect, what motivates, motivates her to teach non-duality? There's nobody in here, just like there's nobody in there. There's just energy expressing itself. There's not anybody acting independently in this moment. It's just appearing. So I'm not doing this for any reason. It's just happening in this moment. The person in time looks and just sees 
cause and effect and why they've done this. Why are they doing this to me? Why is he doing this to her? And can't and the bigger picture is that the earth circulating the sun, the clouds in the sky, the wind, the houses, the trees, the sounds of these words aren't separate from any other action. It doesn't work like that. There's not someone separate in the bodies doing action. It's just one movement. Andreas Toast. I wish I could have a good question, but my mind is bl my mud is blank. Did you colour your hair, by the way? My mind is blank. Uh, I think I coloured it recently, but maybe like a month ago. So cool. Saw you get my message. Love ya. You look lovely. I love you too, Dee. <laughs> oh my god, my mum's dog is so insanely sweet. Look. <laughs> yeah. I just love the way she looks at me. Can you see her? Hello, mutton! That's the food cupboard just in there. She wants more food. Hello. Hello, Mutley. Cookie, sweetie. She's a little deaf and blind. Cookie, sweetie. You little deaf and blind. Oh, yeah. It's just Lisa. Cookie, sweetie. Boop, 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 boop. Who's a good girl? Mutton. That's all she's after, watch. When I give her the biscuit, watch how quickly she snaps it away. <laughs> okay, guess, guess. Oh. Over there. Well, I don't know if there's any more questions. I don't think so. And if anyone has any more questions, you can quickly slip them in. Or, um, or the next time I stream will be on Wednesday. But I'm changing the time from 7 p.m. to 5 p.m. Oh, no, hang on, hang on. Uh, that's not correct. Oh, balls. Whoopsie. I just spilled my tea. Hello. Hi, Marcus. Hello? I can't hear you, Marcus. Hello? Just having to clear up my tea at the same time. Whoopsie. Marcus. What a loon Lisa is. Thankfully it wasn't on my own phone. Oh, hi, sorry about that. That's the okay. crashed. That's okay. No worries, I spilled my tea at the same time, so I'm just cleaning that up. Aha, uh -huh, yeah, sorry about <laughs> that. Um, so, the last time I talked to you, asked me if I believe, you yeah. know, in Marcus. So for a while I've been thinking about... I asked you um, if you believe in Marcus. Yes, he pretty much asked me that. Oh. Because, you know, the way, because, you know, Marcus was talking about his experiences. Yeah. So there's an implication that there's a person having the experiences. So you yeah. asked me, well, if you're asking as if you are that person, then that's what you still care about, and that's the attachment. Yeah. Um, so for the past month or two, I've been thinking about, you know, what does it mean to say that a person exists? And, and this is also intellectual. Yeah. But, you know, I guess I'm just the intellectual type. That's but in my, in my experience, 
um, a person only exists when there is a thought of a person. Like when you say the word I. No, it also thought. it also is a sense as well. It is a thought, but it's also an energetic sense because those thoughts can come up for nobody. Those thoughts of I need to go to the toilet or I want to make my dinner now can still appear, but for nobody. It's more of a, an energetic sense that that I, I is located somewhere, that that thought is actually coming from someone. But also, you're right, in the, in the description, and I'm sure it's most probably the description where that original energetic contraction came from. Yes, yes, I agree. Um, I think in my experience, there have been three, there have been three factors that are creating the person. Yeah. There's the thought of a person, and then there's the belief in the thought, and then there's also a feeling, a feeling of being a person. And yeah. when all three of those go together, that's what makes the person. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. so I've been thinking, I just want to know what you think about this. Yeah. When you are totally, when your attention is entirely engrossed in something like watching a movie yeah. or reading a book, yeah. I get the feeling like there is no person at all that just entirely disappears. Yeah. Do you agree with that? Yeah. Yeah, okay, it's interesting. But in those moments, there's, the only thing that's absent in those moments is there's not, um, there's most probably not a falling in love with what's happening as well. There's just that bit that's absent. There's just, there's still a bit of meing there. There's not an absolute dissolving into it. But there is mostly absent a person there. Mm -hmm. So when you say falling in love, is that like a feeling? Um, it's like... There are no words? <laughs> oh, would you say it's like the opposite of feeling like a separate individual? Yeah, yeah. And sometimes when the film's there, there's still a very minute, or when you're hand gliding or something, there's still a very minute energy that's resisting this. Mm -hmm. And so it's still kind of a little bit of pulled back from what's actually happening. But it's so small, mostly when you're watching or drinking or eating, or it's just an immersion in what is, but there's not this absolute merging into fusing with what is, which I would just maybe call falling in love, but far out, it's really hard words. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, I think that's um, about <laughs> it. Thank you. Thank Thanks, you very much. Marcus. <laughs> Bye. Okay, we've got one more question. It's Bruce Almighty. Bruno, do you think it's possible to dive divine to divine the future by astrology? Yeah, sometimes that appears. Astrology is accurate. That's not going to this. It's not the same as what I'm talking about. That's just another thing in the flow of things. All right, my loves. I think that's um, that's almost it. Okay, so um, on Wednesday, this is going to take some thinking. So on Wednesday, I'm going to be broadcasting in Belgium, Holland, I mean, at 5 p.m. their time. So that'll be 4 p.m. my time. So the broadcast is going to be 4 p.m. English time 
which is 5 p.m. mainland Europe time. So that's four, five, six, seven, five, six, seven, three hours earlier than normal on Wednesday. I'll put it on my website. Um, if you want to get updates from the talks that I do, then the best way to do that is through subscribing to my blog. And then you can find out all the events and everything I do. And you just go to my website, and my blog's on my website, and you'll see subscribe. Uh, and then there's lots of events coming up. Stan, we're doing another event at Stan's house in Belgium. That's in July, where you can live in for four or five days, I think it is. And then what's coming up next? I'm doing some talks in Holland for the next month. And then it's Vienna, Austria. And I'm definitely going to America now at the end of August for a f festival called Strawberry Fields. I'll put it on my website. Phyllis says it's it's five o'clock CET, so CET. That's the time zone they're into. So so five PM CET. Or well, 17 hours CET. All right, my loves. Thank you. 1700, you say. CET.